Good morning, church. Good morning, family. Good morning, everyone that's watching this morning. This is a wonderful day, and we're going to rejoice today. Thank you for joining us for our Sunday service this morning. Uh, before we do anything else, we want to just shout out a, a big happy anniversary to Tim and Silvada this morning, three years, and to Eddie and Nako, 12 years. Congratulations to all happy of you. Happy anniversary. Yeah, you've, you've done well, and we're so, we're so proud of you, and we're so grateful to have you as part of our church, part of God's church here in Warminster. You are blessed to be a blessing, and we love you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, everybody, and I want to thank you for praying for my brother. Mm. I spoke to him this morning. He's feeling very weak and uh, not much <laughs> sensation down the left side of his body, but he's, uh, the nurses say he's doing okay. He's due for an MRI scan this morning, and uh, we're just praising God. He's told everybody that he has a problem with his sister because she's very religious. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to <laughs> refute that. I am not religious. I am Christian. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, praise the Lord. I just want to, before we take communion, I want to talk about trust. I want to read the scripture in Proverbs 3. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. And it says, don't be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. And I, at this time with the pandemic of corona and everything that's going on, there's never been a greater time than to trust in the Lord and trust in this word. Because it's his word that is anointed and will carry us through. And, and it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. What an opportunity that is today to lean to your own understanding about what's happening in the world out there. So uh, please, I ask you that you make this scripture one of the things that you will pray this week, this coming week, to uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Amen? And now we're going to take communion, which was a covenant meal that Jesus was sharing with his disciples before he knew he had to go to the cross. And I just, I know that Jesus had to trust his father that everything was going to happen the way that God had told him it would. And so if Jesus had to trust, then so much more will we. But he was obedient to the word that he was given. And we must be obedient to this word yes. and trust in this word, especially as we take this communion and we're reminded that Jesus trusted that the, everything he was going to go through, his father would bring him out the other side mm -hmm. and restore back to him everything that he was prepared to suffer on that cross at Calvary. When he took your sins, he took your sicknesses, your diseases, your torments. Yes. You know, coronavirus is not a new invention. It must have been on the cross because it says Jesus bore every sickness and disease known to man. So the coronavirus was on him too. And as we take this bread and this wine to remind us of the covenant that Jesus ratified in his blood and he shed at Calvary, that he took to heaven and put on the mercy seat. And that was his covenant between him and his father. For us and we stand on the covenant that Jesus made in his blood with the Father and I just thank you Father for blessing this bread and this wine today thank you Father that you restore back to us any lack of trust that's crept into our lives as we take this meal we do it in obedience to you trusting that your word is true we trust your word today Lord as we take this bread and this wine that your word is true Amen Amen, Amen. No, after. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this anointed wine that we share, Lord, representing the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all our sin in Jesus' name. <coughs> Jesus. And if you're with your family, would you join hands together as I pray this? 
Make this, Father, we give you thanks for all you've provided for us in Father, Christ Jesus. Father, we give you thanks for all you've provided for us in Christ Jesus. We confess this day we are blessed of the Lord. We confess this day we are blessed of the Lord. This covenant we entered into at the new birth. This covenant we entered into at the new birth. Is a covenant filled with the exceeding great and precious promises of God. Is a covenant filled with the exceeding great and precious promises of God. And we are partakers of those promises now. We are partakers of those promises now. We are healed. We are healed. We are redeemed. We are redeemed. We are delivered from the authority of darkness. We are delivered from the authority of darkness. We are translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. We are translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. We are the head and not the tail. We are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. We are above only and not beneath. We come behind in no good thing. We come behind in no good thing. And all we set our hands to prosper. All we set our hands to prosper. And we praise you, Father. And we praise you, Father. For the newness of life we now enjoy in Jesus' name. For the newness of life we now enjoy in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love communion. I love taking that every week. I make no apology for it. It's not become a habit. It's not something that we do as a tradition. It's something that we do because we love being in communication with God the Father and Jesus Amen. the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Now we come on to the offering. And again, I go back to Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your purse, your mm-hmm. checkbook, Mm-hmm. with all your finances yes, and he will prosper you amen yes, you don't lean to your own understanding when it comes yes, to giving when it comes to offerings amen i've learned that the hard the, the, the good way because when we first became christians we were taught the right thing from the very beginning and it set us in it put us in good stead ever since and i'm so grateful to the people that taught us the truth right from the beginning that we couldn't wait when the Lord blessed us with some money that the tax man was withholding from Stephen. That we, that the first five weeks we became a Christian, we'd given £13 in the offering. We weren't well off, we were in debt. And, and sure enough, with the tax man decided after five weeks of, of us tithing that it was right that Stephen should receive this money. And the first thing we did, we couldn't wait, we wrote the tithe check out on it and ran down to the pastor's house and said, please, will you pray with us over this? We want to give this back to Father God Mm. because the tithe belongs to him. And we were taught that and we don't want to rob God. Amen. He's such a generous God and looks after us. So I would, if there's any lack of trust or any fear in giving, I pray this morning the Lord would deliver you from that. Yes. So that you can trust God in every area with your finances. Amen? What you give, what you sow, what you tithe. Mm-hmm. There are yes, so Lord. many ways to treat money. And the Bible mm-hmm. says the money answers all things. We had to get in a car to come down here. That cost money. You know, we had breakfast this morning. That cost money to buy the food. You can't do anything without finance. Mm-hmm. Amen? And neither can God. Amen? Father, we thank you for blessing this offering today, these tithes, these offerings, love gifts, whatever they are, Father. May they be named and faith released and trust in you that you will honour your word. You will tr- We thank you, Father, your word will work in our lives if we trust you with all our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you're not sure how to do the offering, if you go back to our previous post, this morning on Facebook or on WhatsApp, you will see the details on how to give there. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem now, because not only because the Word tells us to do so, but because God gave us a specific commission to do so and told us that He'd like us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem every Sunday. And we have done that now for about 12 years. And we're grateful that God gave us that Word and gave us the the ability to be able to do that and to honour his word and bless him through that. The people in Israel are suffering in the same situation as we are with the coronavirus, uh, but they've also got the addition that they've got people surrounding them 
that are against them, that they are, are their enemies. And the Bible says that when people are against the people of Israel, the people of God rather, when the people are against the people of God, they'd better look out because they're digging a hole, they get a pit for themselves, and they will fall into it. So we thank you today, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We thank you, Father, that you have blessed the Amen. people over there you, with your word. You've blessed them with comfort. You've blessed them with peace. And you're blessing them, Lord, with the ability, Lord, to stay safe, not just from the coronavirus, but from all the attacks and the wiles of the devil. And we thank you for bringing that peace into their hearts today. We thank you for salvations in Israel. We thank you for blessings in Israel today. They are your people, and you are going to bless them with abundance, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have the word now. Uh, and we're just grateful that God is able to bring his word through his Bible to us in a way that blesses us all. Don't give me a word today. Being good stewards. You've just heard Pastor Jan talk about when uh, we have been faithfully tithing, even though it wasn't much, and then God brought a... Uh, a check in from the tax man that was a hundred times what we'd given hundredfold return that sounds good we were good stewards because the very first thing we did was tithe on it that is a very good sign of a good steward so what is a steward a steward is a manager a person responsible for the appropriate use of assets of another person or company in our case things belonging to God we are stewards of the things that belong to God. In Psalm 24, verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. That tells me that everything belongs to God. And then Jesus himself said in Revelation 22, 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Jesus is from the beginning right to the end. Everything belongs to God. And our stewardship, as stewards of God, our stewardship begins and ends with our understanding that God owns it all. Whatever you can see, no matter where it is on this earth, he owns it all. He created everything for his purposes and for his blessing, and now we are working with it. We are responsible for everything that God has placed into our hands. We're responsible too for the people who cross our, our path every day. But we are mostly responsible for the gospel and getting that out to the lives of other people. In 1 Corinthians 4, 1, it says, Let a man consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. He said, not consider us to be in charge of anything. We're just stewards. We're just managers of God's gospel, managers of God's blessings, stewards of God's mysteries. What are his mysteries? His grace, his love, his salvation, the whole gospel is a mystery to anyone who doesn't understand it yet, to anyone who has not had it revealed by the Holy Spirit. We are always representing him. We are in that duty. We are always representing him. Wherever we are, whatever we are doing, we are representing God. So in all these things, all the things that we have received from God, we need to look after them. What are those things? We'll look in a moment. First Peter 4, 10 says, As we each one has received the gift, Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Each believer has gifts they can bless others with. We've all got these gifts. Each gift we receive will minister a blessing to other people as if it was from God himself. But we are but stewards of each gift we receive from God. So we are here to administer the gift as Jesus would. When he laid hands on people, he laid hands on people. When he preached the gospel, we preached the gospel, just like he did. He says we're also to be good stewards of God's 
multifaceted face, his manifold, multifaceted grace. There's nothing can be this nothing can describe how much grace there is from God. It's so amazing and so wonderful. The grace of salvation, the grace of healing, the grace of provision, the grace of love that He provides for each one of us. It's all there. And we are to be stewards of all of that. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. You are blessed with all spiritual blessings. He calls them spiritual blessings to distinguish them from earthly blessings. In the things that we, we receive daily, the food that we have and stuff like that, the, the friends we have are all earthly blessings. But he's talking about spiritual blessings, ones that are actually only available from God himself. So what are they? Well, here are examples of so there's, there's a few of them. Salvation is a spiritual blessing from God. You can't get it any other way. Healing is a spiritual blessing from God. Even if you go and see a doctor to get yourself healed, God will have given that doctor the wisdom to be able to do it for you. Prosperity is a spiritual blessing from God. Yes, we can be prosperous ourselves, but to have prosperity, which is spirit, soul, finances, everything, and body, in our body as well. Prosperity is the whole lot. Mercy is another one of the mysteries of God. He is so merciful to us in all the things that we go through in our lives. His mercy extends beyond the whole thing, everywhere. His love. His love is so amazing, you can't, you can't number the amount of His love. You can't say how big it is. It is greater than everything you can imagine. He, for His love, He sent Jesus to the cross. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. That's the biggest love is. And peace. God is the God of peace and Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And this is these are all parts of just like little examples of the mystery of God and how he puts all these things together and wants us to be stewards of them, to look after them, to use these for his benefit and his blessing. I'll give you a, a <clears throat> A part of a prophecy that was given to Pastor Janet and I when we were ordained on the 4th of May 1986. So rejoice because I have given you, I have placed you, I have done it by my spirit as my grace unto you. So be that good steward and as you go just minister grace and my people will know that you live big, my people will know that I live big on the inside. You will be a blessing, you will be the miracle and yes I will abide. God said, go and be that good steward. God is encouraging us today to take his word literally. He wants us to be good stewards. So how do we do that? Well, through the years, Pastor John and I have done our best to line up with that prophecy, Amen. to line up with the things that it said, to be good stewards. If someone comes to us and tells us they have a, a financial problem, we will share with them the mysteries of the gospel concerning finances. We will share that. We will be the good stewards of that. If someone comes to us with a sickness or a disease or something like that, we will share the gospel, the mysteries of the gospel. We are good stewards of those mysteries and we'll share them with the people to the extent they will get healed in Jesus' name. Now we want you to do the same. We want you to be good stewards of what's been given to you and pass it on to other people so that you can be that blessing too. What I'd like each person listening to me today to do is, after this service, write down a list of the things you believe God has blessed you with. For some of you it might just be health. It might be peace. Obviously it's salvation because we all need that. It might be some deliverance you had. It might be the fact that you've got a saved family. It might be the fact that you've got a peaceful family. Whatever it is, all these different things, I want you to write them down. Then ask yourself, have I been a good steward of each of those gifts? Have I been a good steward of each of those gifts? Have I shared that blessing, that gift, with anyone else? 
I remember when we were in Germany, we started getting people saved. And we realized that there was a possibility that other people could get saved afterwards. So we thought, this is wonderful. We are saved. This is wonderful. Lord, we come to you today, and we, Janet and I, we sow ourselves into the gospel. We sow ourselves into the kingdom of God as seeds. And we expect a harvest to be reaped. So we were really good stewards of our own salvation that day because we sowed Amen. ourselves into the kingdom with our own words. Amen. We made those words, that declaration before God, and that day we were as seeds sown into the kingdom of God, expecting a harvest. Amen. I don't know whether it's a good idea that we, that we could have kept a list of how many people we got <laughs> saved, or maybe we really just got a bit big-headed about it. I don't know. We never kept a list. But we know there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people are saved as a real result of the fact that we sowed ourselves as seed into God's kingdom Amen. so that he could bring that harvest about. And some of you listening today are part of that harvest. We rejoice with you. It's absolutely wonderful. Now we're encouraging you to do the same. Amen. Amen. When you've received a gift, couldn't you ask yourself a question? Could I bless someone else with that gift. In fact, the number of times that people have given us cars, again, I think we'd have to list that's, uh, that's more than two hands worth of cars that we've been given. And often we've been given the cars when we actually don't want one ourselves. So our first question is, Lord, who can we bless Amen. with this gift? So. And he shows us every time. And every time it is spot on, that person really wants a gift of a car right now and God has arranged it to, to be given to us so we can give it back out again I think that's amazing of course it is amazing because God's amazing and we trust him yeah, we do trust him, amen so here are some examples uh, of uh, some of the gifts that you might write down about salvation have I shared the blessing of salvation with someone else so that they could be saved so that they could have the same gift in their lives. If you've never shared the generosity of God, the blessing of God, the love of God in your salvation with someone else, you need to do that. To me, there is no greater blessing on earth once you've got saved yourself than saying amen at the end of a prayer when you have just led somebody to Jesus. Hallelujah. That is so, so, so amazing. Closely followed by being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Are you baptized in the Holy Ghost? Can you pray in tongues? Do you know someone who's a Christian who can't do that yet? No believer can do it, we know that. But do you know someone who's a Christian who can't do that? Share that blessing that you've got. Be a good steward of that gift you've got. Have you ever laid hands? Healing, for instance. Have you ever laid hands on someone to be healed? Maybe you haven't. You need to do that. And also, maybe you've been healed yourself. Have you shared that testimony of healing with someone else so that they could be blessed by it? The, the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Some people you know are sick and they will overcome not only by the blood of the Lamb but the word of your testimony when you tell them that you have been healed by God. When people, I heard somebody once say oh, a number of years ago they didn't believe that God healed people. I said, well, you're too late because he's already done it in my life. People have said, oh, we don't believe in prosperity. I said, you do believe in prosperity because you just said you, because you just said you don't believe it, it won't work in your life. So it's already working in your life. But they didn't realize that. You can't tell me prosperity doesn't work. It's already happened. We've already experienced it in our lives. Mercy. An example of that, uh, one of the blessings, one of the gifts you might write down. Am I as merciful to others as God is to me? My goodness, that is a massive amount of mercy. Mercy is such a, a, a great blessing from God because he loves us up. He wants to be merciful to us. You know, uh, mercy is when you don't get what you do deserve. You know, when you've done something wrong, and God has mercy on you, he doesn't punish you. Grace is when you do get what you don't deserve. Okay? Uh, well, salvation is by grace, through faith. 
Mercy is wonderful, and we need to be merciful to other people. One of the massive gifts that God has given to every Christian is love. The Bible even says he has the love of God. That's not just love. The love of God himself has been put into our hearts and shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who empowers us, who indwells us and causes us to be born again. You have actually got God's love in your heart. Please don't tell me you can't love somebody else. Now, take that gift and go and love somebody with it. How do you love them? Be merciful to them. Bless them. Give pray them something them. they don't deserve. Pray for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pray for them. Do things for them to bless them. The other thing you might write down is that you might have peace in your life. Now, I'm not limiting to the gifts that you can write down to these few I'm come, uh, talking about here. You may have hundreds of gifts that you're thankful to God for. I, if I kept going, I could list hundreds and hundreds myself of all the different things he's done. And I know that God wants to do that with us. Peace. Am I a bringer of peace wherever I go? Or do I cause strife? There's an answer. Because if you are a bringer of peace, you are being a wonderfully good steward of that gift of peace you received when you got saved. And I'm grateful that God is able to be able to bring those things into our lives today and help us to understand these things. Because he wants to bless us. Will you start today? Will you get your pen and paper, your notebook, or your phone to make notes on, however you do it, and make a list of the things that you are grateful to God for that he has given you, starting with your salvation? Perhaps you will share this word with someone. If you think this word has blessed you, then share it. That's the whole point. You no, know, Facebook was created for God wasn't created by God, it was created for God. Yes, I know there's some negative stuff on there, but at the moment it's one of the biggest platforms on the planet for sharing the gospel. It's received by people, uh, I love, we watched that little video of Jesse the other day, and I love what he said when he was shared that mes mes uh, message with us at FCM. He said, he said, I think it's so funny, there's the devil, he's called the prince of the power of the air, and we're shooting this message through the air. Despite him, he can't stop it happening. This message is coming to you through the air. The devil can't stop it. The devil can't do anything about it at all. And you are receiving this word. Why not share this word with somebody else? If this has been a gift to you today, then be a good steward of it. Don't just click on the end and forget all about it. You are now, because you've received this, you are now responsible for it. You are a steward of this word. Amen. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to share this with people? Are you going to tell other people what a blessing it was? I know that people will be blessed and they will be blessed to hear this word. They'll be, even be more blessed to hear that you want to share it with them. We've had people get saved and when, they, when we're talking to them, they're, they're saying to us, I, I'm not sure I deserve this. I'm not sure I deserve to be treated as good as this that you're treating me now. And we say, we are only stewards of what's going on, and you have not seen anything yet. We're treating you nice. Wait till God gets hold of you and changes your life forever. Amen? Amen. So let's encourage you today. Don't just be stewards. Be good stewards of everything that God has put into your life and everything that he continues to put into your life in the future, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Have a blessed week. Amen. You know where our phone number is. If you need anything, please ring us and tell us and we can pray with you. And I thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' name. We take authority over every sickness, weakness, yes, virus, in the name of Jesus, over yes. anybody's life watching this program today and anybody in FCF Church. We thank you, Father, for the covenant we have with you. We can trust you, trust you, when we pray according to your word, that by your stripes we are healed in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for your mercy, your grace, your wisdom, above all else, the wisdom for this coming week in Jesus' name. Father, may we be ambassadors for the kingdom of God wherever we go, in the name of Jesus, blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we love you. Amen. And if you do have any specific prayer requests or anything like that, just 
click on the, the message symbol at the, the top of the Facebook our Facebook page and send us a message or send us an email or a text or anything like that and we'll get back to you and we'll pray for you, pray for you. okay? Could, so, please continue to pray for my brother Peter. He's very frightened and uh, needs a lot of prayer. And no, least, most of all, salvation. He's Amen. not saved yet. Amen. He's, uh, he's pretty anti it, but so was I. Uh, <laughs> I, I was a, a, a on, on fire for the devil atheist. And uh, nobody could convince me otherwise until I walked into a room uh, in someone's house here in Warminster one evening and I met the love of God Amen. in the life of those people. I met the love of God in Kenneth Copeland who was sharing the gospel on video. I met the love of God in Kim Freeborn uh, who sees you together in heaven with Jesus now. Amen. And he shared that gospel with us and I got it that night. I, went from, I went from atheist to born again believer in about or oh, probably three hours maximum. Mm. And God just got hold of me because of his love. I had never experienced love like that before, and mm -hmm. nobody has, until you realize that God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, was prepared to send his only begotten son into the world to come to the world to teach people, and then go to the cross and die and go to heaven and be raised from the dead. Oh my goodness me. It, it, it's just amazing, and I thank God for that love, and that's why I am a good steward of that, because I want to tell people about salvation everywhere. So have a wonderful day today. Well, for those less. people who are watching that aren't members of this church, we ask you that you, we ask the Lord to bless you, Amen. and thank you for watching. Amen. Amen. Have a good day. Corona-free virus, go in Jesus' name. Be safe. Amen. Be safe. You are. Be safe. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.